generational cults, secret drug ring conspiracies, ritualistic sacrifices, and ancient hellhounds. This book has a little bit of everything. The Reddening by Adam Neville explores prehistoric horrors that may not have been left behind in history. This is the second book by Adam Neville that I've read, and I've really liked both of them. His books are a little dense and kind of long, but the writing style is very cinematic, so it's very easy to breeze through, and all of the time spent laying down groundwork usually comes back around for a satisfying payoff. The Reddening takes place in a coastal and rural area of England, and the area seems to be divided by locals who live in town, farmers who live out in the country, and the extremely wealthy who use a section of the coast to dock their yachts. The area is also used by tourists and locals for recreation. There's camping, hiking, and even hang gliding, and hang gliding is what kicks the main premise of this story into action. A man local to the area, who's an avid hang glider, notices a new fisher in a cliffside he's never seen before while he's flying over the coast. And he decides to go check it out, assuming that there was some tectonic activity that opened up this new fissure, this new cave that he saw from the sky, and what he ends up discovering turns the archaeology and history world on its head. The cave becomes a massive dig site, as human remains and relics that date back way further than humans were previously thought to inhabit the area. And among the human remains and relics, there seems to be a sacrificial area discovered, as well as a ritualistic burial ground. After closer inspection, it's revealed that the human bones they discovered have teeth marks on them that were made by human teeth. And that's all I'll say about what was discovered inside of the cave, so I don't give too much away about the story. While the past is being dug up, revealing an ancient history of human sacrifice, ritualistic burials, and even cannibalism, in the present, people have started to go missing in the area in which the cave was discovered. This is happening with the backdrop of rumors circulating of illegal drug fields being hidden somewhere in the farmlands, as well as rumors spreading of mythical red folk being spotted. A large area of land where the caves and quarries are located are actually owned by an old rock star from the 70s named Tony Willows. He's since become a recluse at this point in the story, but back in the day when he first bought the land, he used to throw wild parties, and a woman even died at one, causing a lot of controversy. He doesn't really venture into town, and he's not really seen that much, but his band, when they go into the history of him in the book, his band is called Witchfinder Apprentice, and I was getting a lot of Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath vibes as they talked about the history of the band and what it had to do with the area, and it really made me think of the whole Satanic Panic era taken to its most logical extreme if it was actually true. I won't go into too much more detail about this, but there are definitely hints of there being some kind of cult, and I think that's where some of the horror shines through in this book, is it really does a good job of making you unsure of who to actually trust in the story, especially when some of the ties run so deep and feel so ancient. That's a lot of background info on just some of the plot. There's a lot more I don't want to get into just so I don't spoil anything. Like I said, it's a very dense book, and we haven't even gotten to our main protagonists yet. Once everything gets set up, the book starts to fall into alternating chapters between our two main protagonists. Kat, who was previously a highly respected journalist in London, but she had some kind of burnout and some relationship problems and decided to move out to the countryside to slow down, and Helen, a single mother who is visiting the area investigating the disappearance of her brother. Her brother is one of the people who disappeared in the area over the past couple years. I think Kat and Helen are both great characters. At no point did it ever feel like they fell into the damsel in distress trope that a lot of women characters in horror fall into. I mean, they both get into their fair share of intense and horrible situations, but the way they both rise to the occasion and overcome it is extremely satisfying, and it's super interesting how the intense trauma affects them both differently throughout the main story. One of the minor complaints I had about this book is that it does feel like it takes a little while to really get going. It does start with some spooky action and sets up the mystery, but we didn't even meet our two protagonists for a little while, and it made me feel like I didn't have anyone or anything to latch onto. But once we finally got our bearings and got used to the world, I really couldn't put the book down, and that's really saying a lot because, again, it's pretty dense and a pretty long read, but I just wanted to keep reading to find out what was going on. 
There's some supernatural elements in the story, and a lot of it is left to interpretation, but I think a lot of the horror and scary elements of the book come from the people and the town surrounding our main characters. It's pretty horrifying to think that you're the only one not involved with some group or some cult and just everybody is out to get you. There are also some scenes of pretty graphic violence, but I don't think it's gratuitous or just thrown in there for no reason. It really does suit the situation and it really fits the story well. Overall, The Reddening by Adam Neville was a great read. I would definitely recommend it if you're looking to dive into something pretty deep. But if you're in the market for something a little more casual, add this to your list of books to read and then come back when you're ready to commit some time and attention to it. The harsh world of cults, drug rings, and ancient mysteries of The Reddening will be waiting for you.